these are by far the most expensive boots I've ever purchased. And I've been waiting since August for them. And, and we're not cutting them in half, so don't get your hopes up too much. But I wanted to make a separate video on them because they're just absolutely insane. They're just, if you take something to the ultimate degree, that's what these boots are. And so I want to just kind of dive into this and kind of show you all the different aspects of it because they're $2,000 boots. And there's, I think there's a lot of people out there that what that they want to know, like what makes a boot worth $2,000? What's the best, not even necessarily the best boot, but if you just go all out on quality on everything, what boot is that? This is a good example. This is a Viberg and Horween uh, collab, not combination, Horween collab. And I bought them because you know, like most mechanics, they don't they don't drive nice cars. Mechanics always drive like really terrible cars that barely run because they're so busy working on their own car or other people's cars, they never work on their own cars. That's how I get a little bit with boots and shoes. I, I We cut up so many boots and shoes and we're always buying them for the channel that sometimes I don't buy my own, my, buy myself stuff. And so I was like, we hit 300,000 subscribers in August of 2021. And I was like, you know what? That's a good milestone let's ball out of control. Let's buy a $2,000 pair of boots to commemorate that. And now here we are in July or August again. Yeah, I guess it's August again. So a year later, we're at just under 600,000 subscribers, which is crazy in and of itself. So thank you guys for all your support. It's been really cool doing this and it's what allows me to occasionally splurge on my own footwear and buy something absolutely ridiculous. So let's start getting into this. And a big part of the reason I bought these boots was because it's it's a collaboration between Viberg, who makes arguably the best of the best boots in the entire world, and Horween, who arguably makes the best leather in the entire world, especially with the Cordovan line that they do there. They are they are the Cordovan manufacturers. Like there's other people that make Cordovan, but Horween, Horween popularized Cordovan, and a lot of people think they make the best Cordovan. So, so that in and of itself is enough, but then, when I first started this business, you know, we, we started making wallets, we started making leather goods. And then the thing that really put Roseanville on the map and really made me think that this is maybe more than just a college hobby, maybe this could be my career, was we launched a Kickstarter for a camera harness for wedding photographers that holds two camera harnesses to your side. Cause everyone had, there's people that made them before, but they were just crosses in the back of like basically two belts. So we made a really nice contoured one that was based off of the like gun holsters and gun harnesses because that's kind of, uh, being raised in a small town, I was around that and around backpacking. And so we just applied a lot of the backpacking and gun holster technology to camera harnesses. It blew up on Kickstarter, raised half a million dollars between Kickstarter and Indiegogo over the course of a couple months. And so we had to buy some leather. So we flew out to Horween's leather factory in Chicago and went through the tour, hand selected some leather. And at the time, you know, we were a tiny business and with a tiny order, because all things considered half a million dollars worth of of camera harnesses really isn't that much leather, especially compared to what Horween is used to dealing with and the bigger companies actually buy huge amounts of leather. And when we got there, we they rolled out the red carpet for us when they didn't have to. You know, Nick Horween and Skip Horween were super nice. They really, they really welcomed us in. They took some time to just like make us feel welcomed when they had no reason to. This was before the channel. This was before we had, you know, the biggest thing we did was a Kickstarter. And so I really appreciated that and it felt, it, and it always really stuck with me. And so when when it came to Nick Horween and the guy Brett Viberg combining to make a boot, I was like, I gotta get it because like those, those guys are so nice to me. Viberg makes the best of the best. I'm gonna spoil myself and get these two thousand dollar pair of boots. And so so that's kind of the long backstory of why I ended up designing buy these shoes. Because if you're like me, you almost have to justify every purchase you make because I'm a a little bit tight with money. So that that's my justification, that's a backstory, that's everything about it. So enough chit chat. We'll open this up with a little tactile turn knife. Not a sponsor, but maybe, maybe there'll be a sponsor by the time this video's done. We'll see how this goes. This might be my last unboxing video. Let me just peek to me, okay. Is there, okay, there's another box inside. Longest unboxing ever. Now to the real box. Pulled up my knife for safety. Yikes. So, let's open them up. I don't know how to do this actually. I guess I'll open it like this. Okay, I need, I need some work with the opening of stuff. Okay, duster bag. Woo! 
Oh yeah. Look at that. That is a $2,000 shell cordovan boot. I already lost my mark. Oh, there it is. Okay. We got some shoe cream. Got a little... This is something I really appreciate about what brands, or appreciate that brands do, is like the, the branding and marketing and the, the nice little things that don't always show up on the main channel because not that many people, the general public don't care, but I, I care about this kind of stuff. So this is like a little card that talks about like the stitch down construction. I'm like a little shaky because I was so excited to open this. This is a little care guide, which is really nice. A lot of people don't know how to take care for their boots and a certificate of authenticity. Kind of cool. Um, another little like cleaning cloth and the other boot. They smell so good. It's, they actually smell like Venetian shoe cream, which I think is probably what they conditioned with before they sent them. Those are some good looking boots. Look at that. Look at it. By far the most expensive boots I bought for myself personally. Um, so now let's go through some of the details. Uh, so first, the description of these was a pretty, pretty good description. They say the large, okay, the <laughs> color number eight, Shell Cordovan Engineer by Viberg Boot. The large panel and demanding pattern of this boot requires the most careful selection of leather and materials. And that was part of why I, was, I really wanted to get a pair of these because Nick Horween and Skip Horween hand selecting some pieces of shell cordovan to go into your own boot. That in and of itself is pretty cool. You know the guys that tan some of the best leather in the world hand selecting some of the best of the best leather for the best of the best boots making the best of the best of the best engineer boots in the world. So kind of cool. Um, the boot you, utilizes stitch down construction and a structured leather toe, uh, leather toe a cat's paw outsole and an unlined shaft. Each pair will ship with a shell cord of skeletons remnants from the cutting of your boots, which I didn't include, but uh, Nick sent an email. was like, hey, we forgot, or maybe the guys at Viber didn't realize we were trying to save them. So sorry, if you want some cord in, let me know. I didn't take them up on that because I already I have some cord in. And uh, yeah, so I thought it was kind of cool. Nice little touch. And fit note. So this is the 205 last. It's, it's, they say it's a generous double E last, similar to the 230. And that's what one thing that was really that's really cool about Viberg that we haven't even dug into in the channel is Viberg is hyper focused on the fit and the and the different lasts and there's there's a ton of different lasts they do there. I can't wait to start getting into Vibergs because it, it's such an interesting brand. So um, what should we do next? Let's go over like some of the details of this thing. So what do I like about this boot? The thing that I really liked was there's a lot of engineer boots out there that have a super high heel and not that I'm opposed to wearing high heels. White's collab coming in hot and uh but i just a high heel on an engineer boot i just it wasn't a style i was ready to commit to but this one is a pretty low heel all things considered and i like the half sole i like the old school cat's paw uh out soles I, these it's pretty hard rubber i think according to the guys at nicks they, they the cat's paw guys quit making them and so they're, they're a really rare outsole at this point I really like that it's a stitch down construction. I, I like the, the simplicity of it. I feel like I still really like like the, I'll just pull this off. I like the Goodyear welted stuff and I like White's way they do Goodyear welts, which I also can't wait to kind of show you guys on the main channel is how, how different White's hand welted stuff is. But it is a different look. You know, you can see that the hand welt is not quite as clean as the stitch down. It just it has a different look to it. And another thing you'll notice is the stitch density. You know, look at the difference between the White's stitch length and the Vibergs. The Vibergs, that is, and that's part of what Vibergs is known for because they have a, a heritage in work boots, but they've shifted more towards like a higher end uh, casual boot that, you know, it's the heritage boot style. And so they've decreased their stitch density, or maybe they didn't, maybe they've always been like a higher stitch density, but you know, even like up through the, the sidewall and stuff, it's just a lot tighter stitches, which is a more finished look. It has a, I don't know, just it has a more dressier look to it rather than these big stitches. I don't think it matters either way. I like the wide stitches, I like the thin stitches, but you know, it is what it is. A couple things that I didn't super love right off the bat was they had some photos of the, I think, prototype of this and it had like the rounded straps. 
instead of these pointed straps, which, you know, it's pretty nitpicky if I'm being honest, but I did like the rounded straps just a little bit more. I thought it kind of complemented the, the flowing angles or the flowing curves of the boot. You know, you've got a curve on the heel counter cover, the toes curved, you know, the, the, the heel loops curved. Like it's kind of a, a curvy boot. And so to have these sharp angles, I didn't, that's, the, that's literally the only thing I don't love about these boots. Um, I, and the other, another thing I really like about this is it's unlined is, you know, coming, coming from like a leather purist perspective, I just like unlined boots. I like to see how it ages. I like the simplicity. I like the breathability and, uh, it's just hard to beat raw underside cordovan too for how it ages on the inside. There's a leather insole, obviously in the half sock liner, which has, has like a little foam underneath, which is a nice little touch because the problem with, you know, some of these Pacific Northwest boots, like these whites, love them, super comfortable, super fun to walk around in, comfortable to hike in, do whatever. But I took these to a, actually a Coheed and Cambria concert last night, uh, which was super fun, but I wore these and it did give me a, a little extra couple inches above the crowd, which was nice, but standing in them for four or five hours, my dogs were barking. They, they're pretty, uh, pretty tough on your feet. Especially if you're walking around, it's fine. It's just like standing, it's a little tough. So having a little heel patch of foam was, was a nice touch that I didn't know I had. So that's the likes, that's the dislikes. That's the majority of my nerding out and fanboying over this. Um, as for what Cordovan is, why would, why would I be so excited about Cordovan? Well, Cordovan, if you don't know, isn't typical leather. You know, leather is the skin of a, a cow or an animal where they put it through a tanning process so it doesn't rot and makes it a stable material. Well, Cordovan comes from the butt cheeks of a horse. They, they basically take that leather and deep inside that leather below the surface is a, almost like a membrane underneath the regular leather. And they have to take it on these machines and they shave it down to get to the actual shell itself. And it takes like, I think it's nine months to tan. It's like 40 different processes because it's such a hard membrane and it doesn't tan in the same way that leather does because of how tight the grain pattern is on the leather. And some of the unique characteristics of Cordovan is that it, it doesn't really crease and wrinkle like le regular leather does. It doesn't have those big open fibers that just cr uh, crinkle up. Because the fibers are so tight, Cordovan more rolls. It still kind of gives a little bit of a wrinkle. If you look at these Sagara boots, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Like I haven't polished these up in quite a while. You can see it does kind of wrinkle, but it's not the same as like a boot wrinkle. Like if we look at so many boots on here already. We look at these wrinkles, see what I mean? Big open wrinkles, doesn't look bad, but part of these unique characteristics of Cordovan is that you just polish that up and those little wrinkles just disappear. Actually, you might as well try it on screen. This, this video might end up being like a 45 minute video, who knows. Putting a little bit of Venetian shoe cream on there, or assume it's something like Venetian. It smells a little bit different, but you can see that those just kind of go away. And Cordovan, there's a lot of like myths, myths and uh, hype around Cordovan that nobody's really tested to see. So I eventually I want to do some tests on Cordovan. They say it's like one of the most durable leathers in the world. They say it's uh, the shiniest leather in the world. There's all these claims. They say it's like nearly bulletproof, but it is a very unique leather because it does that wrinkling. It does keep it shine really well. And you can wear these boots like I've worn these hiking and all you gotta do is do buff them up and all that shine comes back. All those folds and rolls start to really show. It's really unique leather. So I'll show you guys also um, boots underscore and underscore patina who sent us the kangaroo boots for the main channel. He had an early pair of these before they were even released and he's got a, he got them pretty worn in. So I'll add some shots behind while I was talking about that. So you can see what these eventually look like because it's just, it's, it's really cool how the shaft kind of folds and rolls underneath your pants and really starts to get those highlights and lowlights. And that's another thing that's cool about Cordovan is it changes colors literally every angle you look at it because it has a little bit of like almost a micro hairs or like a, cause it's not, it's not a solid material like rubber. Like if you look really, really closely at it, it's still fibrous but they're really, really fine fibers. And so because of that, you get unique different color changes on the different angles you look at, it, especially with the lighter color Cordovan. And another thing about Cordovan is it's because it comes from the horse's butt cheeks. There's, you know, the horse has got big butt cheeks, but we're, we're still talking only this big per cheek. 
And so instead of an entire side of a cow that's 25 square feet, a big piece of cordovan is like only two or three square feet. And the price of cordovan, you know, leather is anywhere from like 10 to $15 a square foot. Cordovan is anywhere from 100 to $250 a square foot. So it's literally 10 times the price of regular leather. And that's a big part of why these are $2,000 is just the cost in leather alone is ridiculous. Cause you look at this thing, this big panel on top here, you've got a seam down the back stay, but that wraps all the way around through the front and all the way back through there. So you have to have a pretty big piece of cordovan that has the right strength, the right thickness to make just the shaft of the boot alone. And if you splayed out this toe, the vamp, that's a really big piece of cordovan too. So you, you have to use big pieces of cordovan to make this. And uh, that's a huge part of why it's so expensive. That's why every cordovan product out there is like three times the price of any regular leather product. But uh, that's part of why I wanted it. Cause it's, you know, it's, kind of, it's just cool to have like something really rare and hard to get and limited. It's fun to do. Everyone falls into the hype. It is what it is. But the, but the rarity and, and the la limited supply of cordovan isn't the only reason why these boots are in limited numbers and hard to get and you don't see a lot of cordovan boots out there. It's also because it's really hard to work with. Because cordovan, though it is really strong and it has a lot of strength, it is prone to cracking and splitting because that super tight fiber structure, you don't have those big fibers interlacing that give it a lot of its strength. It's basically like if you took that cross section of leather and only had grain as thick as this leather is. So because of that, it is prone to splitting. And even when they were making these boots for me, um, they sent me an email like, hey, by the way, like your boots were almost done, but then one on the side split when we were, when we were lasting it. So we got to get some more cordovan and remake the one boot. And I don't, let me see if I can even tell the difference between the two boots. If they were like, they look pretty close to be honest. You know, maybe one's like a little bit more purple. But yeah, that's another problem with cordovan is it splits really easy. So that's kind of the, the the rambly version of what cordovan is and why it's hard to get and all that stuff because it, it and maybe we'll do a full video one day testing cordovan really dig into the details and maybe interview one of the horween family to get their perspective on it because ultimately there's only so much information out there about cordovan and those guys are the authority on it so hopefully one day we'll, we'll chat with them so this is my first pair of oh actually one thing i just barely noticed speaking of the difference in color Look at the difference of the inside color of these two. And this is this is another like super deep nerdy thing that you probably don't care about. Maybe you do, I don't know. But look at the difference in the color of the insides of these. You see this boot on my left is super light. This boot on my right is very purpley. And you might think, oh, well, they're, they're dyed really differently. Like how could they have such a variance in the color? Uh, also, love the fact you got the Horween stamp in there, bonus little thing. I don't know if you can see that or not. But the way that they dye these, as far as I remember from that little tour we did at Horween, is they, they tan the hide, they do everything, and when it comes to dyeing them, they, they hand brush it on, and then they dunk them in tanks. And I don't know if, I can't remember if it's water or if it's dye, or maybe, I think it must be water. It must be water to, or some compound to rinse them. So the first few hides they rinse come out really light because there's not a whole lot of dye in that rinse. But by the end of dunking 100 or 200 hides or, or shells all of a sudden the, the the water is like purple and so a lot of the so a lot of the, the late dunking hides get a lot of purple on the back side and that's why the two interiors are different fun fact and these are also my very first engineer boots i've had like slip-on boots and work boots that were pull-on boots but i've never had a pair of engineers because i you know I, the, something about the buckle just kind of turns me off a little bit they just are a little bit gaudy the same thing to me like as a zipper on the side i just i don't know i just never really liked buckles on boots but they, these bu buckles are like really thin and slim and they, I, I like the boots so much. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a pair of engineers and see how they look. So when it comes to how to wear engineers, people out there will, will say like, oh, you gotta tuck them in your boots. You gotta like make sure the, the leg opening is a certain thing so you can't see the, the shaft of the boot, whatever. And they really uh, poo poo people stacking their, their jeans on top and like exposing the top. But that's also the same people that say, you, you can't wear two-tone boots, they're ugly. And that type of gatekeeping kind of drives me nuts, especially when it comes to boots and like style, because that's half a style is doing whatever you want with the clothes and how, how do you shape things and what silhouettes are you going for to look how you want to look. So when people tell you not to wear certain things certain ways, it drives me nuts. So if you want to look like Marlon Brando in the wild ones where he has it stacked up on top, do it. If you want to look like a, 
a heritage pirate with them stacked up and rolled up however you want, just do it. Because the thing is, you're, you like for me, I spent $2,000 on these boots. Part of me doesn't want to cover the entire boot, especially when it's cordovan with a pair of raw denim, which, you know, is, is cool. But like, I'm kind of just want to show these off. And I, I, people get mad at me all the time because I always like stack my, my jeans on top. And half of the reason I do that is to show you the boots in the video. But also, you know, some of these boots are expensive and they're really nice. And I, I just, sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm just, you know, I, these, like these whites, you spend 650 bucks or whatever they are on them. And then you cover them up. I'm like, no, let the, let the ankles breathe. Show the ladies your ankle a little bit. Like, I don't know, that's uh, so I, if you're, if you're into engineers, wear them however you want. Don't listen to people tell you how, how not to wear them and how, how big of a leg opening and how not to stack them. Do whatever makes you feel good and whatever makes you feel confident. Because that ultimately that's what style is, right? Is, is getting the things that you want to put on your body that make, that accentuate your body, make you feel better. So do whatever you want. And for me, I'll probably stack them and, I, and uh, I'll probably do a little bit of both to be honest. We'll, we'll see how they look. I haven't even tried these on yet. So maybe we try them on. Let's, let's see how they fit. So these, so when it comes to sizing on these, I am a 10 on the Brannock. I have a pretty narrow foot and I have a low instep. And in like whites and nicks, I usually wear a nine and a half. And with these, I had sent them my sizing and everything. And, and I have like really scrawny ankles. So I, hopefully they took into account my scrawny ankles, but they said to get a nine. So these are a nine. And like the description said, it's a really wide last. So it'd be like a double E, which sounds like it's going to fit right. And uh, let's find out. I don't know how to quite point this camera down. Maybe I can, should I get on a table? Uh, <laughs> we're about to get sketchy in here. All right, I'm going out, all out for you guys. If I crash and die on this, like and subscribe and comment. Okay, for, I don't even know if anyone cares about this. Oh yeah, that was actually pretty roomy. I was really concerned about them being too small. But as you can see, I told you I have dainty little ankles. You can see how much room I got in there. But while I'm putting these on, we'll also go take some shots outside of me wearing these and, and see what you guys think. Yeah, look at that. It's stacked up. Not bad. They, def they definitely are roomy. I, I probably have the wrong feet and ankles for engineer boots, but I might have to just punch a couple extra holes in this strap because that is this is how much room I have. I got like four inches of extra leather, but maybe that's engineer boots. Like I said, I've never owned a pair. So yeah. So Brody and I just finished shooting the B-roll for this and they're just way too big. Like I have this on the uh, last setting on the buckle and watch as I slip this on. <laughs> Easy, you know, I feel like engineer boots shouldn't be that easy to slip on and off. So what we're going to do is punch an extra hole in this strap because it just, when I'm walking around it, I'm, I feel like I'm wearing my dad's boots from when I was a kid. You know, my foot's sloppy in there. It's loose. It's, and I think over time as they break in, it'll help make them more comfortable and fit better, but they're just way too loose. So we got some tools. And we're going to do the nerve wracking job of punching a new hole in a brand new pair of $2,000 Cordovan boots. So to do that, I don't know how to lay this exactly flat. I guess we'll just do it like that. So I'm just going to take a measurement of the stitch or the hole. Wow. I guess that like right on. So center to center, I'm going to mark it right there. I'm going to take a little hole punch. Or he doesn't kill our light. All right. Does it look pretty centered? Yeah. I swear I'm shaking from the caffeine and not. I, I am too right now, so. I feel like that's pretty good. Let's punch her through. Three, two, one, go. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now let's try it on again and see where we end up. Guys are lucky I'm tall that I can give you the whole foot donning process. So, you know, look right now, I've got five inches of extra space there, and it's just not doing me any favors. So, if we cinch this down to the new hole to there, 
Let's see how that did. Oh. Okay, I can still pull off. I wonder if I should punch another one. Can I punch one more? My, my fear is that as I cinch this down more, all this leather is going to keep folding more and more. So I think, I think I'll leave it at the one hole for now. Pretty sick. I'm super excited about these. Hopefully I can get them to fit me right. That'd be a bummer, wouldn't it? If I spent two grand on a pair of boots and they don't even fit me. But the sizing feels right. It's just a matter of getting them broken in and see if the actual shaft conforms to the shape of my foot. If not, we might be cutting them in half. But probably not, honestly, we probably won't. But that's kind of the ins and outs of the Cordovan boots. The most expensive boots I've ever purchased for myself. I, I can't remember if we purchased anything else for the channel, but I'm pretty sure these are the most expensive ones, at least for my personal collection. And so let me know what you guys think. What do you think of this style of video? We're just kind of get on and ramble. I like doing this kind of stuff because it just allows me to not optimize everything I do and say in the videos for the algorithm because, you know, at the end of the day, it's a business. But these long format ones, I really enjoy because I just get to talk about what I love. And uh, I always get out of breath because I get so excited, I get rambling. And next thing you know, it's probably been what? 30, it's been like 30 minutes. So. We'll probably cut some of this out, but I appreciate all you guys' support. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, The Rose Anvil 2, and let me know what content you want to see, what you like, what you didn't like, because really, at the end of the day, The Rose Anvil 2 channel is kind of the wall that shit gets thrown at, and whatever sticks is going to stick, and whatever we enjoy doing. So if you like a specific type of video, be sure to support it, because that's how we're going to decide what we keep pushing and what we don't. So thank you guys for everything. This job is a dream come true. Never thought I'd be buying $2,000 boots made out of horse butt cheeks, but here we are. So thank you guys. See ya.